uh, just after we uh, passed Heil, my partner on the back of the motorcycle said, you need to look out for this person that is right alongside of us. Uh, so as I looked in my rearview mirror, I saw that there was a 1963 Valiant, and uh, what uh, this gentleman was doing was uh, obviously drinking at that time, and he uh, was uh, swerving from lane to lane, and what he uh, began to do was to push us over into the curb. Now, we were riding a motorcycle at the time, and this was before helmet laws. So he uh, pushed us over to the curb, and I rode out in front of him a little bit, and um, thought we were good. And uh, what happened uh, next is he uh, matched our speed, and then he uh, came back over at us, and this time had me up against the curb. So I uh, made the biggest mistake of the day, and I uh, went ahead and I reached around, and I gave him a, a single finger, and uh, at that point, uh, this gentleman, and I knew we were in trouble then, he became immediately enraged, stepped on the gas, pointed the car in our direction, and came straight for us. We hit the gas, and by this time we were coming over the ditch there by uh, uh, Golden West and um, uh, Warner there, and he ricocheted off the curb. I hit the gas, we shot out in front of him, and he went out across the double yellows. This was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. And just as we cleared him, a car came out from the Radio Shack parking lot and cut off our mode of escape. So at that point, I had to make a very quick decision because this gentleman was coming in hard from the side. The car was now driving him. He was no longer in control of the vehicle. So I cranked the handlebars, and anybody that rides a motorcycle will tell you that it is a very difficult thing to lock the handlebars when you're going in a straight line. And just as I did that, uh, the car came through, took the motorcycle out, and threw us forward and to the side. My passenger hit the chain link fence over the drainage ditch, landed, and walked away from the accident. I unfortunately, I hit the post, drove my chin into my neck or excuse me, into my chest, and uh, promptly broke my neck. So I was there on the ground. I was able to move, but I couldn't get up, and uh, I was still uh, conscious. This individual was not finished, and uh, he turned around and ran into the unfinished shopping center across the street, which is the Stanford Brothers Shopping, shopping Center, uh, where he was subsequently caught by Huntington Beach Police. He was hiding out. And um, for me, the period of recovery that occurred from that moment on took many, many months. I, I, I spent weeks in the hospital um, and then several months thereafter regaining my strength and uh, agility and ability to uh, move normally. To this day, I still have uh, limited mobility uh, in my neck. Uh, it, it doesn't always show, but sometimes it's, it's fairly obvious. Um, and while this occurred, uh, or during this period of time, I received a telephone call from a brand new organization. It was called the Victims Witness Association. It was an act that was uh, signed into law uh, by President Reagan in California. It was the first uh, state in the uh, country to go ahead and adopt it into its, con into its constitution to allow for uh, victims to uh, gain restitution. The individual that struck me had no license. The car he was driving didn't belong to him, had no job, and uh, therefore my attorneys told me there was pretty much nothing that I could do. So this new organization uh, assisted us in making sure that he served the time that he was due for the crime, which he went to jail for attempted murder. And at that time, he did serve a significant amount of, uh, of prison time for that. And uh, several years afterwards, I began receiving little checks in the mail from this individual. It was um, totally unexpected. And I kind of wish that those days were back, as was mentioned with uh, Prop 47 and, and, and the like and the way that we're going. It, it just seemed that even though I didn't have to reach out real hard to the Victims Witness Association or group at that time, they were there for me. And even years after the accident, they came and you know made sure that 
whatever small uh, amount that I got, you know, was something that would help, and, um, you know, they made sure that this person served the time that, uh, that was due. Uh, it has changed my life, as I said earlier, uh, forever. Uh, I, I do have uh, some limited mobility, and um, you know, but it hasn't slowed me down. You know, I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunities uh, that uh, have uh, presented themselves in my life, and, and I thank you all for being there. And to the first responders and to the police department, thank you for what you did that day, and thank you for all you're trying to do now. Thank you.